Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Is this the end of Blitz? It seems this type of video, well, it comes around every six months or so, whereby we ask the very same questions over and over again, predicting the demise of World of Tanks Blitz. Yet it still endures. So, is this the end of Blitz? Well, in a word, no. But that no comes with a great many caveats. Because there are some very, very testing times ahead for the game. And no doubt the company, or gaming. Over the last two years, Blitz, along with most other games, had a captive audience. What with the COVID lockdowns, and, I mean, that did wonders for the game. Now, however, we face a brand new challenge. What with the unpleasantness currently happening in Europe? Since the end of February 2022, when Ukraine suddenly found itself subject to a military invasion, Blitz itself has actually suffered, and suffered a lot more than we really realise. Until that invasion, the player base was slowly but surely increasing. The lockdowns had finished, so it was a pleasant surprise to see the player base increase. Wargaming itself was becoming more and more interactive, what, not only with the official CCs, but they were listening to the community and they were fully intent on making real positive changes that would benefit the players and the game overall. Then, war came to Europe, and many believed, incorrectly that I might add, that wargaming is a Russian entity, and as such needed to be boycotted in a show of support and solidarity for Ukraine. Wargaming, whilst it is fair to say originally from Belarus, is not a Russian entity at all. In fact, Wargaming has been a Cypriot, aka European Union entity, for quite some time now, and its headquarters was moved from Minsk in Belarus to Cyprus quite some time back. Wargaming was also in the process of relocating its blitz element of the operation to Lithuania, another EU country. Nevertheless, many incorrectly felt that wargaming is somehow associated with Russia. Well, as such, quite a large number of the player base, especially from the EU and NA, left the game. This can be seen on Blitzstars. Whilst OK, it's not the most accurate of data sources, it does show a true reflection of attitudes at the moment. Wargaming itself has done what it can to distance itself from Russia and Belarus and has been very vocal in its opposition to the Ukrainian invasion, even going as far to dismiss those staff with a pro-Russian stance. Wargaming itself recently announced that they were offloading its entire RU server operations, which will have a massive impact upon the company and quite possibly the game itself in quite a few areas. I know for a fact that Wargaming employs a great many talented staff from Russia and Belarus, and a lot of research and development is undertaken by such staff in various locations, including Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. These staff no doubt face an uncertain future, one which has been forced upon them, and no doubt in almost all the cases is something they do not agree with. Wargaming also has a very significant amount of staff based and from Ukraine, who again face an uncertain future as war rumbles on in that country. Some may still reside in Ukraine. Those who don't, they will certainly have loved ones and family members there, and that alone will mean their minds are focused on the safety and well-being of those loved ones and family members, rather than a small pixelated tank game. And who would blame them? I personally interact frequently with the staff at Wargaming, and since the end of February, it has been rather quiet on that front. And I hope that those staff members I have dealings with are safe and well, along with their jobs and careers. On the face of it, Wargaming dropping its interests in Russia shouldn't really have an impact on the other servers, but if you dig a little deeper, then there is potential for quite a significant impact indeed. Let's just look at one area, tournaments. Due to COVID, 
the last two years of forced wargaming to run the Blitz Cup, rather than its traditional offline twister. I know for a fact that they were hoping to get back to the Twister Cup this year. What with Covid no longer creating the havoc it once did. Little did anyone realise that Europe would be plunged into a war, along with all the restrictions and hardships such a state of affairs brings. Clearly Minsk will not be able to hold a twist offline like it once did, due to the fact that Belarus is caught up on the side of Russia and therefore subject to wide-ranging sanctions. Not only that, but I doubt that anyone from EU or NA would be remotely willing to travel to Minsk in Belarus in any event. We then have the sponsorship side, which is what funds most of the tournaments. Now, majority of the sponsorship, oddly enough, comes from Russian entities. So with Wargaming dumping its Russian operations, severing its ties with the RU server, coupled with the sanctions placed upon Russia, that source of revenue is now denied to Wargaming. Rightly so, of course. And undoubtedly, this has been taken into consideration by Wargaming prior to making its recent decision. We then have the players themselves caught up in all of this. The RU server was by far the biggest of the servers, and the players there undoubtedly paid a significant amount into the wargaming coffers. Going forward, this will not be the case, and that must have some impact on the game long term, because the size of the NA and Asia servers will not bring in anywhere near the revenue stream that RU did. I mean, the RU server was in fact larger than EU, NA and Asia servers combined. So it really is a significant amount in real terms. Quite possibly some of the players from RU may relocate to other servers. Asia and EU springs to mind initially. But then there is the issue of payment sanctions preventing certain transactions taking place. Mastercard and Visa have removed themselves from Russia, so credit card payments held by Russians aren't going to happen. And then the Russian banks have now been sanctioned, adding to a greater inability to pay. Couple that with the fact that PayPal, the source of a great many internet banking transactions, has also removed itself from Russia. That means Wargaming couldn't pay the players, because Wargaming generally pay competition winners via PayPal, but it also prevents the players from making payments, especially those in Russia and Belarus, regardless if they relocate their accounts to another server. Now, it may be that the Asia server seen, may see a larger number of players. This is mainly due to many Asian countries have not sanctioned Russia and Belarus like Europe and America. But I think it will be minimal, if any. These are uncertain times for wargaming and for the game of Blitz, that is for sure. But I think Blitz will weather the storm and it will endure. We may not see massive amounts of changes, like new maps or new lines, but Wargaming, I think, will do all that it can to be, well, business as usual. The shrinking player bases are a cause for concern, but it's not like there aren't any players. Yes, EU, RU and NA have all shrunk what appears to be 50% since the end of February. Asia, on the other hand, has gone upwards. But the numbers on EU are still significant, and for, for, for a mobile game. NA is a concern, and a big concern, not going to lie. It was already a small server, and already a small player base, and losing 50% of that base now makes it smaller than the Asian server, something I never thought I would really see. But I get back to the initial question, is Blitz dead? Well, I don't think it is. I think it's quite alive. But it does face extreme challenges. And as the war in Ukraine rumbles ever onwards, those challenges increase every single day. However, the challenges we face regarding a pixelated tank game is nothing compared to the challenges faced by those caught up in this conflict. And I for one am more than prepared to weather out this storm, because there are certainly more important things in life to contemplate and get miffed about. Just go out and ask any Ukrainian who faces extreme hardship and uncertainty at this moment in time. And that focuses the mind somewhat. It's just a game. It's not life and it's not death, not for us. Weather the storm 
and everything will be well. In time, spare a thought for those caught up in this nastiness. Anyway, I've been Fujit. By all means, comment, like, and everything below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. And until the next time, guys, remember, really, stay safe out there. I'm not going to say my usual stuff. I'm just going to say, stay safe out there. But uh, try to have fun with the game, because that's what it's all about. Having fun. <laughs>